Should I use a photo, and is the photo I have any good? Think about what kind of image you want your scorecard to project. If you want a more traditional scorecard, you probably don't want a photo. Here are some examples of scorecards with conservative designs. Notice the logos are the only thing on the cover. There are no photos anywhere. Now, see what happens when we add the photos to the covers? They become a lot less conservative looking, don't they? One more time, notice the difference? If you do end up using a photo, you need to make sure it's crisp, at least 300 dots per inch when sized to fit your scorecard. If your photo is any less than 300 dpi, you run the risk of it printing out blurry. Which photo would you rather have on your card? The one on the left or the one on the right? If you're not sure what DPI your photo is, just send it to your scorecard printer and they will be able to tell you. When you send photos to your scorecard designer, always make sure to send them the original file. As you can see, my phone gives me four options when sending files. Small, medium, large, and actual size. While your device might prompt you to send a smaller file at first, make sure you always send the largest file size possible. What if you don't have a good photo? Luckily, just about any smartphone can take a photo good enough to go on your scorecard. The first thing to consider is whether you want a landscape or a portrait layout on your scorecard. In general, portrait photos work well for 6x8 and 6x12 cards, while landscapes are good for 4.5x12 cards or a two-panel spread on a 6x12. That's the rule of thumb, but sometimes things aren't so straightforward. Say you've got a photo you really like, but it doesn't fit your scorecard design. Let's take this photo as an example. It's a landscape shot, but you've got a 6x8 card. Doesn't work so well, does it? But hey, what if you make it smaller, so it only takes up part of the cover? There, that's better. If your photo is high enough resolution, you can expand it to fill the cover and crop out the bits you don't want. Finally, you can rotate the photo. There's a lot of nice clubs with really pretty landscape shots that have done this to make it fit. While these are all possible solutions, it's probably easier to just keep in mind whether you need a landscape or portrait photo when you go to take your pictures. Now you need to figure out what you're going to shoot. You need to ask yourself what makes your golf course unique. Every golf course has a signature hole or view. Think about what makes your course different from all the others and try to capture that feature in your photo. All the photos on these cards are of things you aren't going to see at any other course. It's what sets them apart. Once you've figured out what you're going to take a picture of, take a couple pictures early in the day or late in the evening. You want to take photos when the sun is low in the sky. It gives the photo greater shadow contrast and makes colors appear rich and saturated. See the long, dramatic shadows in these photos? That comes from the time of day the photo was taken. The same photo taken at midday would look very different. Now that you have your photos, take a couple minutes to really examine them. Focus on the details. Are there RVs in the background? Telephone poles? Construction equipment? Take another photo, or see if your scorecard designer can edit them out for you. We've covered a lot of ground in this section, everything from how to send your photo to what time of day to take the shot. Here's an example of a card with a photo that exemplifies everything we've talked about so far. The head pro at Jug Mountain needed a photo for the cover of his card. He knew it had to be a landscape shot and that the picture had to be of something unique. One morning, he saw the mist rising from the water hazard and snapped a picture of it with his smartphone. It turned out great, didn't it? The lighting, the mist rising from the water? It all makes for a very impressive photo. More importantly, it's an example of a photo anybody can take. We see a lot of stunning photography taken from airplanes or through the lens of a several thousand dollar camera. These pictures are incredible, but the Jug Mountain photo shows that you don't need a professional photographer to get a great shot. All you need is a smartphone and a little patience. In this section, we went over everything you need to know about putting a photo on your scorecard. 
To recap, if you've got a conservative style card, you probably don't want a photo on the cover. If you do use a photo, make sure it's at least 300 dots per inch. If you don't have any good photos, you can take one with your smartphone. First off, think about whether the photo needs to be a landscape or portrait orientation. Then, try to take a picture of something unique to your course. Take the picture at an angle that avoids any unpleasant details like RVs or telephone poles. Photos taken early in the morning or late in the afternoon usually look better than those shot at midday.